When I was 14, I weighed 250 pounds. Now, at the time, I felt really embarrassed about how I looked, especially when it came to wellness and fitness class. Not only was I the first one out for most of the physical fitness tests, but when it came to talking about weight, eating, and nutrition, I felt judged. Not by my peers or by the teachers, really, but by the systems we were being taught. Fast forward a few, fast forward a few years, I'm now in 10th grade wellness class, and I'm about 80 pounds lighter, and I feel better about how I look. But when we get taught, <laughs> when we get taught the same stuff, weight, nutrition, and eating, we get taught the same sy systems that caused my self-image issues just two years prior. One of these systems that really enforced my issues was body mass index, or BMI. Now, if you're not familiar with BMI, it's your weight in kilograms divided by your height in meters squared. To quote the CDC, it's an inexpensive and easy tool for evaluating health. But the history of BMI isn't exactly what you would think. It was invented by a random Belgian mathematician from the 1830s, a man who wasn't even a doctor, who set out to define what he thought the perfect man should be. According to the ABC News, his thinking was that he could take thousands of measurements, compare them, and try to find the ideal weight, or what he thought the ideal weight should be. Now, through his research, he found that weight typically increased with the square height of a person. But there were many, many flaws to his method. First, he only considered Eastern European men in his testing. Second, muscle weighs more than fat, and his math equation doesn't account for that at all. It was invented to judge, it's being taught in schools, and it's making people like me feel judged. Who would have thought? It's, BMI is useful for countrywide statistics, I'll give it that. But for a singular person, it can be damaging. Truth is, all of our bodies are different. And BMI doesn't count for that, different body types, age, or gender. It only judges because that's what it was made to do. So, back in 10th grade wellness class, when we did it again, I was categorized as overweight. This made me feel awful, that all the work that I put into myself to make myself healthy, exercising every day, eating what I ate to the all the point, tracking what I ate to all, tracking what I ate to the only, tracking what I ate to the point that all I could think about was food. It, but this little number, it crushed me. It made me feel less. Later that day, I was talking with some friends, and the topic of BMI came up. They were saying everything that I was feeling, how they were feeling judged and embarrassed and even uncomfortable. But one of them said something that really stuck with me. She said, this is going to bring my eating disorder back. I remembered that, and I remember my experiences with my other peers how some of them can't eat in front of others for fear of being judged, how some of them don't eat at all because they hate the way they look, how some of them can't stop eating, and how some of them make themselves throw up because they don't want to see the effect of what they eat on their own body. We get taught, we get taught all these things about our weight, but nothing about how we feel about it or how we feel about food. We only get taught numbers. So, when I remembered all this, and I went back to thinking about how I felt, I remembered how in schools, we're never taught about any of this. We're only taught about the recommended amounts of proteins, fats, and carbs, and calories, and that there's good food to eat, like fruits and veggies, and bad food to never eat, like sugary food and fried food, and let's be honest, one's better than the other. I was taught that it's so much easier just to be healthy, to stay in a healthy weight, to eat healthy, to exercise every day. But the truth is, that's not true. It's not true for me, and it's not true for a lot of people. But in schools, we're not taught about any of that. When the numbers on the scale aren't what we want them to be, we go to social media for answers. Always a good idea, right? We see these people with our ideal body types and would follow their advice to the ends of the earth if it meant that we could look like them. We see these people give awful and even sometimes harmful advice and think just because a skinny person's doing it, it must work. They say, go on this crazy diet to lose weight. They say, do these exercises, eat this food, never eat that food. 
There are people online that support eating disorders because they think if it works, why care about the damage? But it doesn't work. According to Eating Disorder Hope, 94% of people with an eating disorder have a co-occurring mental health disorder. And according to the Mayo Clinic, complications with an eating disorder can cause serious health problems, personal and social issues, work and school issues, substance use disorder, suicidal thoughts and behavior, sub no, yeah, substance use disorder, and even death. But we were never taught about any of this. We've, made, we've created this environment that puts so much of our self-worth into numbers, into weight or BMI, and not even how we care about, <laughs> we care so much about it. We're not taught how to help have a healthy relationship with food or a body, because we're only taught numbers. But students shouldn't be taught things that have a negative effect on their health. The reality is, we are. For me, eating is like running a marathon every day. During this time, I felt very alone. I felt like it was so much easier for everyone else, but so hard for me. And I didn't really know why. We're taught how easy it should be, not how hard it actually is. In schools, they don't teach about this stuff. And that can have a really bad effect on us. It makes everyone feel like, if they're dealing with this stuff, that they feel alone, just like me. They've, and then what we are taught, it makes us feel judged and uncomfortable and embarrassed. But we can have another chance at this, another life to save our children's lives. We can start looking at what we're teaching in schools and how it's making people feel. We can start teaching about eating disorders and how to recognize them. We can start teaching about having a healthy relationship with food and our body. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters. Not feeling judged, not caring about the numbers, and feeling good about ourselves. Thank you.